In today's video, we have the latest NHL trade talk around Dallas Stars goalie Anton Hudobin. We also have the latest updates on Bruins forward Jake DeBrusque, who has requested a trade out of Boston, and several updates regarding the Montreal Canadiens, including an update on Carey Price, the update on their GM search. Could they target player agent Kent Hughes, and would he possibly bring some of his top A clients to the Habs organization that could include guys like Patrice Bergeron and Chris Letang? We'll discuss all that possibilities coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of NHL news and rumors to talk about here today. Uh, let's kick things off with a couple of milestones that we've seen accomplished here in the NHL over the past day or so. First up, we saw uh, Alex the Great, Alex Ovechkin, reached 750 career goals as only four players in NHL history that have accomplished this. So he's now fourth in that list all time, only behind the greats of Wayne Gretzky, Gordie Howe and Yaramir Jagr, and he's the second fastest amongst those four guys, including himself, of course, to reach the milestone. Only Wayne Gretzky did it in fewer games. So obviously, we know that Ovechkin is well on pace to possibly break Gretzky's all-time record for goals in a career. So uh, we'll have to see if he can stay healthy and keep up anywhere near the pace he's on this year. Then certainly, it seems like a very much a realistic uh, possibility that he's going to do this before it's all said and done. And it really, many people already consider him to be the greatest goal scorer of all time, given the fact of how much the game has changed during the Gretzky era compared to today. Uh, but he'll obviously be considered that, I would think, by even more people, given the fact that he holds the all-time record. We also saw uh, Jets captain Blake Wheeler play in game number 1,000 as well. Uh, so that's quite an accomplishment for Wheeler. Um, so certainly going to be more accomplishments here uh, as we come up here later into the season as well. And we've even got some players approaching 1,000 points, including uh, Leafs forward Jason Spezza, who I believe is down to... It's under 20 points. I can't remember the exact number where he's at as of right now. I know he had a three-point night just a couple games ago. Got himself a little closer, so he's projected to hit that this season as well. Now, on to some other news from uh, waivers and some injury notes. Uh, the waiver wire has Pontus Aberg on it. Unconditional waivers through the Ottawa Senators organization for the purpose of contract termination. So, we're seeing another forward basically be uh, basically bought out from his contract. He's expected to head back and play in Europe. Uh, he had signed a one-year free agent contract this past offseason and I guess wasn't satisfied with the opportunity uh, and it makes probably more sense for him to head back to the uh, to the European leagues. I mean, Aberg's a player who was a fringe NHL player for some time. Has bounced around uh, for the last few years for a variety of NHL teams on short-term contracts and between waivers, etc. So, um, not a huge surprise that this came to be. I know when he was first signed, it was like, well, he could be a player that could be called upon in the right circumstance. But given where the Senators are at, uh, they certainly would probably prefer to give any opportunities they've had to get a better look at some of their younger talent that. Uh, you know, is likely to be a bigger role of their NHL future. So we'll see where this goes, but I would imagine his time in the NHL uh, comes to a close and he moves on. Uh, in the injury front, some updates here. Uh, Quinton Byfield, the former number two overall pick in the NHL draft, uh, has yet to play this year. Uh, will be back uh, with the American Hockey League's Ontario reign. So the LA Kings have activated him off IR. But instead of going straight to the NHL, he's going to the American League for a little while. I would imagine that after a handful of games and showing that he's uh, obviously you know over the injury and playing well, that he'll be called up and given an NHL chance because he was expected to likely start in the Kings' bottom six uh, when the season started. But injury uh, kind of took over and derailed things there. Uh, Mitch Barner set to miss his second straight game for the Maple Leafs after a collision with uh, Jake Muzzin in Leafs practice a few days ago. So I know there was video of that. Looks like Barner wasn't quite too thrilled with things. Him and Muzzin, they didn't get into anything physical or anything, but, uh, you know, clearly they were having some words over the situation, but uh, I don't think it's anything too serious, and Marner likely will be back. Hopefully, uh, we we'll maybe miss one more game or so, and he'll make his return to Toronto. Uh, Malcolm Subban, who was just traded from Chicago to Buffalo in his first game with the Sabres, 
gets hurt. They really can't catch a break when it comes to goaltenders. Uh, it was just recently revealed as well that uh, Craig Anderson, who was their top goalie early in the year, of course, he and Aaron Dell were both signed to one-year veteran, uh, you know, one-year contracts. Uh, Anderson was by far the better of the two getting the playing time. And then he got hurt. Now it's been uh, updated to be month to month for Anderson. So he likely won't be available to at least January. And there's some questioning whether or not he even makes it back. And this might be the end of the road for Craig Anderson. It might be the end of his career. We'll have to wait and see where things go. But certainly these uh, Sabres uh, have had trouble with goalies. Of course, uh, Dell and Tukarski. Tukarski's had some issues too. Bring in Subban, he gets hurt. So... Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to go out and make another deal or not, but certainly uh, terrible luck when it comes to goalkeepers in Buffalo. Darnell Nurse also expected to make his return to the Edmonton Oilers tonight, uh, so that's certainly nice to get back for Edmonton. They certainly missed him, although they fared reasonably well without him, but that's a big horse back there in the blue line, logging lots of minutes. Uh, we'll be interesting to see how much the roles change for guys like Bouchard, especially, who's done especially well in Nurse's absence while he's been away on the IR. Now, there's also talk on Hockey Night in Canada's 32 Thoughts segment with Merrick and Friedman talking about the potential return of taxi squads. Now, of course, we've seen several NHL teams have issues, uh, obviously, with COVID this year and uh, COVID protocols. And, you know, there's been some situations where they've been short goalies. We've had a couple scenarios where uh, we've had to have uh, an emergency backup goalie, the e-bug, uh, you know, dressed and, you know, obviously not in action, but still it's played a role. And so there's been renewed talk of this. Uh, they have reached out to the NHL between Gary Bettman and Bill Daly for a statement on the situation. Uh, and right now the NHL is saying that it's not high on their radar, but you'd have to think that it's something they might have to look at here. I would imagine that if they do this, this could be something that, Maybe takes place for the uh, the second half of the year, like after we get through the uh, the All Star and Olympic break. Maybe they get things worked out then. But certainly, Jeff Merrick acknowledged one of the big, you know, obstacles here would be the fact that the season's already going. So, how do you make those adjustments? It's certainly not easy. You obviously, would have an impact on the American Hockey League because uh, they would likely most teams would bring up a number three goalie to have on their taxi squad. And the taxi squads, if they did return, might not have the exact same rules as before with the same number of players and all that, but certainly goaltending would be at the forefront. Or even if they let them carry a third goalie, but have one goalie designated as a taxi squad so that they're not counted against the cap or something like that. But we've had a lot of situations with COVID in the AHL as well. Uh, and there's, I think, eight or nine teams that have had some fairly significant issues down there. So it may not really be a situation that's easily resolved right now anyway. But don't be surprised as the season goes along if this becomes a renewed conversation and we see more talks about trying to figure out a way to get it back into there before we get to the end of the season. And if, if they don't do that, maybe it's something that uh, we could see later on. Obviously, the playoffs, there's a little bit more flexibility when it comes to expanded rosters. So it won't be such an issue once we get to that point in time. Now, uh, before we jump into the rest of the video, we do need to pause for a moment and acknowledge our channel sponsor, Manscaped. Top Shelf Hockey is proud to be sponsored by Manscaped. Of course, with Manscaped, we have a special offer here for all Top Shelf Hockey viewers where you can get 20% off in free shipping and all orders at Manscaped.com. Now, of course, Manscaped just launched a brand new Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, which is a fantastic product. They've taken the level up here even again with the skin safe replaceable blades, uh, they have it's waterproof, it's wireless charging, uh, has a travel lock on it, uh, as well as a nice light so you don't miss what you're doing. So certainly a terrific product. Now many people associate Manscaped with their trimmers, which is certainly uh, kind of their top product, but they do have a lot of other great options as well, uh, including what they call the Weed Whacker, which is another trimmer for your ears and nose, and they have a variety of deodorants and sprays as well, which also keep you fresh and are terrific as well. So certainly Manscaped has a lot to offer and we certainly highly recommend all of their products. So check out manscaped.com and use promo code TSH for 20% off and free shipping. So thanks very much for watching that promotional content. Of course, we're back to promoting our own promo code TSH for 20% off here with Manscaped. Obviously, they've had some great sales recently uh, with the uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals, but those deals are now uh, moved on and done with, and we're back to the 20% off, which is your standard deal that you can get by being a Top Shelf Hockey viewer. 
Now on to the trade section of the video. First up, I want to talk about the Dallas Stars and their goaltending uh, with Anton Hudobin likely being traded sometime in the near future. Another uh, segment here from Hockey Night in Canada's 32 Thoughts segment, uh, which is not a huge surprise. The Dallas Stars have a plethora of goaltenders. They have right now Jake Ottinger and Brayton Holtby have been really running with their ball here, being the top two guys. Jake Ottinger's been uh, obviously limited action, but one of the top goalies in the league and, and stats-wise and the games he has played. Braden Holtby has found his game, has been really solid. And not to mention, besides Udobin, they still have Ben Bishop, who's been on LTIR, which feels like forever. And there's some talk that he could play this year. Uh, it hasn't been made available as of yet. I'm not sure exactly what his status is, but certainly Dallas uh, had some... You know, not a great start to the season, but they've done better recently. They're certainly in the mix for playoffs, and they could use uh, some extra depth and uh, you know, in other areas of the team instead of having four capable goaltenders. So, Anton Hudobin certainly is out there. Uh, he has been been shopped by the Dallas Stars. Uh, Jeff Merrick referenced the fact that before they traded for Malcolm Subban, that the Dallas Stars did have conversations with the Buffalo Sabres about a potential Hudobin deal. You'd have to think other teams, like the Avalanche, for example, who aren't settled in goaltending and are expected to be a top team. Now, mind you, they're division rivals, so that might be a trickier deal to pull off. Might be less likely that we see that. There's been some talk about Montreal maybe being in the goaltender market, even possibly the Oilers, depending on the health of Mike Smith later on. There certainly wouldn't be any shortage of interest. We've seen just a short uh, two seasons ago what Anton Hudobin did with Dallas in the playoffs, helped them go on a run all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, he proved he can carry a heavy workload. He can be one of the better backups in the league. He's been that on numerous occasions in the last number of years as well. So there certainly won't be a shortage of interest in this experienced uh, veteran goaltender. Now, the only problem, though, is he has a little term left on his contracts. Not this year alone. There is one more year, both at $3.3 million. So that might be trickier for some teams than others to make that work from a cap perspective. So we'll see. But he's being actively shopped and likely will be moved sometime before we don't get before we get too further along in the season. Now, when it comes to some other players here, I want to look first on Jake DeBrusque. There's also some updates on him on uh, the 32 Thoughts segment, talking about the return asking price. We already know that the, uh, the Bruins are well aware of his trade requests. We also know that there's been lots of interest. We've heard all kinds of teams in the early going expressing interest in reaching out to the Bruins about a potential trade discussion around the 25-year-old forward who's been inconsistent for the better part of the last couple of years, but is a former 27 goal scorer, former first round draft pick in many field in the right situation with the right trade uh, and the right fresh start that he can bounce back and be that 25 to 30 goal guy again. So certainly something the Bruins want to make sure they get fair return on. According to Elliot Friedman on that segment, he says that the Bruins have made it known to other teams that the asking price is a young defenseman or forward of similar value. And they've also made it well known that they really value DeBrusque highly. They're not going to just give him away. They're not going to rush into this. They're going to do their best to accommodate the trade request, but they're going to do it on their own timeline and make sure they get the right deal. I don't see this being drug out anywhere near the effect we saw Buffalo drag on the Jack Eichel situation, but still it's a situation that we should see, I would say, probably in a matter of the next few weeks or so likely be resolved uh there's a, like i said all kinds of teams out there eight to ten teams that were already expressing interest and i think it's fair to say there's going to be a few others i know when it comes to players of similar value like i mentioned before maybe a mason appleton in seattle although i think the is probably going to be valued higher in that regard but maybe they get more than appleton return maybe it's vince dunn out of seattle hard to say uh we've heard teams like the oilers and the flames but Personally, I think that's going to be a tricky deal for them to pull off, but it is remotely possible. Um, but, you know, I don't know. The Bruins are open to different types of players as long as they're similar value, similar age, and they're open to different positions. So we'll see where this goes, but at least we now have an idea what Boston's expecting in return. And I'll lastly hear several updates in Montreal. Now, of course, we know Carey Price has returned to the team. He's been back with them for some time after having his stint in the player assistance program, but he's nowhere near ready to play. He's likely going to be at least into January 
before he gets into any kind of action. So with his prolonged absence, that's why the Montreal Canadiens are being mentioned and potential goaltending trades around the league. Now, when it comes to the other big part of the Habs news, of course, it's the GM search. Finally heard comments from Jeff Gordon in his press conference with Montreal Media just a few days ago. And one of the things he said that was interesting that was discussed again on the 32 Thoughts segment on Hockey Night in Canada was the fact that they are willing to think outside the box, consider a variety of candidates, including potential player agents. Now, Elliot Friedman, after looking into this, after hearing these comments, comes up with who he feels they might possibly be interested or targeting with that type of remark. But keep in mind here as well that they're in the very early stages of the uh, search for the GM in Montreal. It's unlikely they've had really much of any conversations with anyone. They're just gathering data and determining who it is they want to talk to. Gorton made it known they wouldn't likely come to a decision and hire anybody until sometime after Christmas in January. So really, there's no big rush. They'll take their time. They'll get it right. But the agent that Friedman believes that he would have interest in would be player agent Ken Hughes. Now, of course, Ken Hughes is a former player himself turned agent. Uh, Hughes was born in the Montreal area. He is fully bilingual, so he meets those criteria, and he has been uh, basically employed as an agent based out of the Boston area. Of course, that's where Jeff Gordon is from and where he's lived for a long time, so clearly uh, Friedman kind of connects the dots, thinking they might have connections to each other from that. So obviously, that might be who they're looking at, lots of other names out there as well, including, like I said, Matthew Darsh, Daniel Briere being a couple of the more prominent names. We know Patrick Waz made it clear he's interested, but many feel that he's not the right fit, and they might talk to him. It's hard to say. I'm not convinced 100% that's going to go too far if they do, given the fact that we know Wall likes to have a lot of control, um, and he's not going to be the head boss. He's going to have Gorton over him, which might not bode well for a, you know, a good relationship in the hockey ops department there but the other interesting thing i came across an article in boston hockey now talking about the fact that hughes might be uh you know connected to the montreal gm job now other one other quick footnote here before we move on to this next part was he was contacted i believe by tvs sports or renault lavois and all he said is that uh he's you know kind of honored his name was brought up but he's had no contact with the Canadians as of yet. And I'm not surprised he would say that. And I believe that it's probably even true that he hasn't had any kind of talk with them so far. I'm not sure that Montreal's really interviewed anybody per se. Like I said, it sounds like they're still gathering data, making their list before they proceed with official interviews. But the thing that I found interesting on Boston Hockey Now is they referenced some of uh, Hughes' top clients and wondered if there could be a fit there because a couple of them are big-time free agents, and this includes Boston captain Patrice Bergeron and longtime Penguins defenseman Chris Letang. Both are Quebec-born hockey players. Uh, both are pending unrestricted free agents, so they could certainly go where they want next year. And the, the article just mused over the idea of would he be able to bring his clients, or I guess at that point would be former clients, to the Habs organization. Now, what direction will Montreal go down? Do they want to bring in veteran help of this nature? Certainly, they could use some additional help at center after being a little bit depleted, losing Philip Deneau. I mean, Bergeron is, you know, arguably one of the top center icemen still at his craft and his age in the game today. So, you know, it's hard to say. Does it make sense for them to go down that road? Are they going to try to do a quick reset? Will they go through a rebuild? We don't really know the full plans as of yet. So obviously those plans will have a big impact on whether or not these players make sense for them at all in any way. Um, but like I said, a couple of the interesting things here is the Bergeron's an unrestricted free agent. We've seen other recent Boston uh, long-term players, captain like Chera, obviously many thought would retire as a Bruin. Ended up not. The Bruins ended up backing away, not signing him. Uh, we know that right now Bergeron and the Bruins have agreed to not talk contract this year, that they won't even touch it until after the season's over. So there's a decent possibility he could actually hit unrestricted free agency and would have that opportunity. Um, so again, now keep in mind Patrice Bergeron also grew up closer to Quebec City, grew up a Nordiques fan, uh, which he was recently asked about when there was rumors about the Nordiques coming back based on comments made from the Quebec government. Uh, and he said he would love the idea, but certainly would love the idea to play against them as a Bruin, not so much retire and go home and play. But he said the idea of playing in Quebec is uh, you know certainly appealing because of the fact that family would be able to see him play more and just be able to play closer to home. But at the same time, he really didn't make any reference to the fact that he had any interest in leaving 
the Boston organization. So you know, we have no reason to think that Bergeron wants to go to Quebec and play for the Hams or if the Nordiques did return to them as well. Um, but it's, it's interesting that his agent could be the GM. He's going to be an unrestricted free agent. We've seen the Bruins walk from other recent vets like Zdeno Chera. Could they do the same to Bergeron? I'm not really sure that they would. I wouldn't think they would, but we didn't think they would do it to Chera either. And when it comes to Crystal Tang, what direction will the Penguins go down? I mean, the Penguins are certainly a team that's kind of been hot and cold this year. If they miss the playoffs, Malkin and Latang are free agents. Maybe they decide to move on from one or both of those guys and go in a new direction and give themselves some much-needed camp flexibility. So it's difficult to say. Like I said, I, I think I understand that these are long shots. They're not even so much trades as they are would be free agent rumors for next offseason. But it's just interesting the names being brought up, trying to connect the dots, and it's just wondering what could be, right? So this article is just musing over the what ifs not to say that they're likely to happen at all i just would like to get everybody's thoughts and ideas on the possibility of either of these veteran players leaving their existing teams and to follow their current agent to montreal should he become the next general manager let me know what your thoughts are does it make sense for the players does it make sense for the habs do you see hughes being a good candidate for the gm role or is it likely going to end up in somebody else's hands let me know your thoughts down below we'll discuss further if you're new to this channel make sure you subscribe and stick around we'll keep you up to date with all the latest news rumors and analysis on all 32 nhl teams thank you for watching and i'll catch you next time